Yeah, it's fine. Hey, how's about a bottle of this nice lavender water, house, huh? Ah, oh, thank you, Tony. I don't need none of that stuff. Well, little Joe, he uses this. Yeah, but if I smelled bad a little Joe, I would, too. <laughs> That's absolutely catnip, huh? <laughs> you can spark all of the ladies with this. Thank you, Tony. Hollis Hotel's across the street. Need any help with your bags, ma'am? No. Hey, Clint, how'd things go? Excuse me, ma'am. Trouble with a pen, ma'am? Number 17, Miss Atley. Top of the stairs on your left. May I help you with the bags, ma'am? No, thank you. Hey, Hoss, as long as you're being a good Samaritan, your lady friend forgot this. Yeah? I think I might as well take it over there to her, huh? Sure a hog for punishment. Here you are, Sir Galahad. Fit you just like a glove, boss. Yeah. You better fit old Nelly like a collar. I'm gonna hang it on you, Frank. <laughs>
Hang on to it a few minutes. I'll come back and pick it up. Oh, Mama. Mama. I'm so sorry. I want to promise you something. I want to promise you that, that I'm going to take whatever time I've got left. And I'm going to try and be what, what I should have been. I didn't want you to die alone. Oh, oh. Oh, I wanted to be here when you needed me. <laughs> I came back too late. Everything's too late. <laughs> It ain't never too late to, to cry over somebody you, you love. in your city pretty well. I reckon it's pretty obvious that I know all the good eating places. I do a pretty fair job of handling a horse and buggy, too.
Well, I got most of the wood shop, but I'm not... Yes, sir, today I put no starch in the collar. Oh, Great. Don't ever do that no more. Hey, listen. How about that? That's how you're going to stick the bow a little bit more. Listen. Yeah. How about my shirt in the back? Very good. Very good. You look very heavy. Hey, I see you got it. I wanted to talk to you a minute. Ah, I wanted to talk to you a minute. I wanted to talk to you a minute. Yeah. I wanted to talk to you a minute. Yeah. I wanted to talk to you a minute. Yeah. Me doing your chores. Yeah. Thanks a lot for that, brother. Goodbye. Is that you smells like lavender water? Oh, no, sir. It's Mr. Haas. He bring home whole bottle last night. Put in bathtub, put in hair, put in everything. What's he got in the basket? Fried chicken, ham, potato salad, loaf of bread, cake, uh, roast beef, little thing like that. What's he gonna do, feed the whole Virginia City militia? He not tell you what he do? No, no he didn't tell me. What, what, what's he gonna do? Well, then I not tell you either. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you how much. Thanks a lot. Confidence is a confidence, little Joe. Yeah, well, look, confidence or no confidence, but I'm getting I'm getting tired of doing double chores. I was breaking my back. I didn't mind it for a little while, but I've been working and working and he doesn't. Oh, wait just one second. I recall a number of occasions when Hoss did all your chores when you went calling on a girl. Well, Pa, that what? He's doing all this for a girl? No. No. What would a girl have to do with getting dressed up every day and dousing yourself with lavender water and going on picnics and polishing the buggy? And listen, young fellow, yeah. don't kid him about it. No, no, I won't kid him. Hey, I wonder who she is. A girl. Oh, one more thing. Yes, sir. Go finish your chores. Yes, sir. What's the matter? Something wrong? Hi, Sheriff. Hi. How are you? This is, uh, this is Miss Carol Atley, Sheriff. This is Clem Foster, our Sheriff, Carol. How you do, Miss Atley? How do you do? You're a new in town, aren't you? Yes. I, uh, hope you find Virginia City to your liking, ma'am. Hoss. So long, Sheriff. Get up. Think of it. I never saw anything so pretty. to believe that a place as beautiful as this didn't even exist once. What do you mean, didn't exist? When all the earth was granite, before the sun shone on it. It reminds me of, of something I read once. Rain beats on lonely granite sheets that have not felt the sun. Silent air has not been moved by cries of sorrow. That was from a, a book that was once very close to me. I don't remember how the poem ends. Do you come here often? As often as possible. Yeah. See that little stream out there? Plum full of trout. Hey, would you like to try to catch one? <laughs> what about a fishing pole? <laughs> and bait. Just happens to be around. Ours. Is it possible there still are people like you in this world? Let's go catch a fish. Come on. Come on. I'll beat your hook for you. All right. 
Yeah. Yeah, I'll put it in there and then I'll let you have it. All right? Yeah. There. Hang on. Watch your cork. Watch my cork? Yeah, well, when you see that cork bobbing, and you know you got a fish, don't you see? Oh. Keep your eye on him. No, you got him up too high. Mm. That's it, man. Keep the end of the pool out of the water. There you go. Now, no, look here. Keep your cork right down there on the surface. Jerk it around just a little bit, see, and tease them. Make that bait look more alive. Yeah. Here, you're doing real good. Just keep an eye on that cork. You got a nibble. I Hang think on, so. Be patient. All right. Hey. Now he's got it. Now he took it. Now put it. Hang on. You want me to get him? No, no, no. I want to. No. Well, be careful. I will. Oh. You, got, oh, really... you got a granddaddy up on. Right. Be careful of the bank, Carol. Carol, bank! Carol! Carol! You all right? You all right? I'm sorry. I didn't even catch him. So gall done delighted? Hey, what are you delighted about? Don't tell me my big brother finally decided to go back to work. I'll tell you what. We're going to have a wedding in the family. Hoss here tells me he intends to get married. What? That's right. I'm going to get married, Joe, just as soon as I can get some things taken care of. Well, you son of a gun. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'll bet you know who it is. Bessie Sue. No, no. Mary Jane? No, no. You, oh, you, you don't even know her. You never met this girl. Her name's Carol Atley, and she just got in town four days ago. Four days ago? That's, uh, that's pretty fast. <laughs> yeah, that's that's why I fixed this thing up so we could all have dinner tonight at the hotel and everybody get kind of acquainted. Oh, you know? oh let's have dinner here. No, Paul, I'd rather go to the hotel so we can do it upright, you know. I'm going to go up and get dressed see you all that while. Okay. I'll be doggone. How about that? Yeah, I won't be an uncle. <laughs> What's keeping? Will you relax? I mean, relax. How am I going to relax? It's not every day a fellow meets his sister-in-law for the first time. <laughs> she must have been sitting there for 20 minutes. Oh, there they are, then. Oh. She's kind of pretty, isn't she? Yeah. Carol, I want you to meet my pa and my little brother, Joe and Mr. Cartwright. This is Carol Atley. Howdy. It's a pleasure, ma'am. Carol, you're as lovely as Horst said you'd be. You're very nice. Well, why don't we all sit out, huh? <laughs> Here. Here. Well... I reckon we might as well start, huh? Sounds good to me. Good idea. What? I think we're ready. Right away, Hoss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Carol? In your family, do you have two brothers like these two fellas? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> no. Any sisters? No. I'm quite alone. I'm sorry. Well, you won't be for long, that's for sure. No. No, you sure won't. We're gonna put a change to that right quick. Well, Carol, we've been 
Looking forward to meeting you and getting to know you. After all, it's not every day that a man's son decides to get married. Of course not. <laughs> Thank you, Martha. Hey. Well, that soup looks delicious. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Martha. Martha's got everything in it. Thank you, Martha. Like we might as well dig in, huh? <laughs> you haven't been in Virginia City very long, have you? Uh, just four, uh, five days. Whereabouts from, back east? Yes. Yes. What town are you from? <laughs> Something wrong, Carol? Carol? I was just asking you what, what town you're from back east. I've lived so many places. Well, what was the last place you lived in? Uh... Was it some kind of secret? Joseph, have your soup. Huh? I'm not feeling very well. Will you excuse me? I'm sorry. I'm sorry to spoil your dinner. Thank you for inviting me. Carol, you, you'll have dinner with us tomorrow night at our house. Yes. Little Joe? in-laws, I guess she has a right to be nervous. You know, being nervous is one thing, but she, she was on her guard from the moment she came in. Yes, sir. Sorry for Hawes. He had this whole thing planned, but he's disappointed. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's eat. Now, Carol, you listen to me. You can unlock that door and go in that room and lock me out. Catch the next stage out of town. Do whatever you like. That's not giving us much of a chance, is it? What chance have we got? I'll tell you what kind of a chance we've got. So long as I've got you, Carol, you've got me. All of my strength, everything that I own, it'll work. No, Hoss. It wasn't your brother. It wasn't your father tonight. It was me. They have every right to know about me, who I am, why I am here. You must wonder why I can't answer normal questions. You must wonder why I, I've never told you anything about myself. Yes, I, I have wondered. But, Carol, I trust you. I believe in you. Most of all, I love you. I love you as much as any man can a woman. And I think you love me. I do love you, Hoss. I wish I could marry you. Carol, what is it? I can't. Why? I have no right. Oh, Carol, don't do this. I killed a man. It was an accident. But I killed him. He was... a cheat. A liar. Drunk. 
But I didn't know that when I married him. Mother and I were alone, and we were poor. We were very poor. And he made a lot of promises. Oh, I was young. I... He was much older. He lived. I was drawn to that. But not Mama. She hated him. She saw right through him. But I wouldn't listen to him. I left her and I ran away with him. And I never saw my mom alive again. Carol. Go on. I want to hear the rest of it. Well, when he was drunk, he was... He was violent. And he used to beat me. And then one night he, he came home and he was very angry. He had, he had some fight with another woman. And he had a gun. They threatened me. And I fought with him. And the gun went off. And then I saw him fall. And he was dead. I, I, was, I wasn't held for it, but I, I can't forget it. I can't, I can't ever forget it. Carol, I told you once. I'm going to tell you again. I love you. And I want you to be my wife. And I want you forever. Oh, Hoss. Please say yes. Please, Carl. Please. Look. Do you remember that, that poem that I read to you? I tried to recite it, but I couldn't remember the ending. you asked me to marry you, I looked it up. Rain beats on lonely granite sheets that have not known the sun. The silent air has not been moved by cries of sorrow. And one bright sun shoots one bright ray, bursts forth a flower, and with it day to bloom for thee. To bloom for thee. Carol, is it many answers, yes? Yes. to it. I'm sure glad you didn't keep it locked up inside her. It would have always been between us, I reckon. Joe, I think it might be a good idea if you and I visited Cal. Showed her the whole family's behind it. Right. Yeah, I think she'd like that, Paul. Well, I gotta get into town first thing in the morning. I got all them wedding plans to take care of. <laughs> now, we'll take care of your chores when we see you that later. I guess I shouldn't bother you too much, should it, Hoss? Not a bit, little brother. Not a bit. You know, it's getting hitched. It's a full damn job. Yeah, well, I think Pa should have warned you about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you might as well say good night and good morning to me right now. Because first thing, bright and early in the morning, I'm taking off. And tonight, i got to get some sleep. Good night. Good night, Hoss. Good night, brother. Well, I'm going to have to do his chores and my chores. I better turn in, too. See you in the morning, Pa. Good night, son. Oops. This is going 
her to be the most beautiful wedding dress in the world. And I'm going to talk to the preacher, and we're going to have the most beautiful and the biggest wedding the Ponderosa ever heard of. I'll be back as soon as I can. Make it very soon. Carol, I'll guarantee you nothing's going to keep me any longer than possible. my bag. Uh, where can I find the sheriff's office in this town? Well, there's a the sheriff right over there. Well, thank you. Sheriff! Sheriff! There's a man following me. What? A man has been trying to force himself on me. If he comes in here, you tell him that I am not registered. Well, certainly, Miss Atley. I never heard of you. Just got in town, Sheriff. What can I do for you? Harry Deemer, U.S. Marshal, New York. You're a long ways from home. Do you recognize this woman? Well, yes. I believe her name is Carol Atley. She arrived in town a few days ago. Why? I'm here to arrest her for the murder of her husband. Are you sure Carol Atley is the one you're looking for? Carol Andrews, Sheriff. Atley was her maiden name. Where can I find her? Hotel, maybe. If not, most likely she'd be with Haas Cartwright out at the Ponderosa. Ponderosa? What's that? That is the biggest spread in the territory, Marshal. You can run a rig at the livery stable to get you out there. Thanks. I'm a U.S. Marshal from the East. So how can I help you, Mr. Dennis? I understand you have a son, Haas. Yes? I'd like to talk to him. Oh, well, he's not here right now. What's this about? I'm trying to locate this woman, Carol Andrews. You might recognize her as Carol Atley. What do you want with her? The government wants her for the murder of her husband. I said that her husband's shooting was accidental. Two bullets through the heart is no accident. Come on, Mr. Thomas. Who is it? It's Ben Cartwright, Miss Ethel. Come in. Just a minute. I was just trying on my wedding dress. It's uh, very lovely. Come in. Thank you. I was going to ask us to marry me right away. Today. Sadly, yeah. Carol. Would you sit down? <clears throat> uh, I had a visitor at the Ponderosa. Demers. Kyle, is what he says true? What does he say? He said that you left your husband, 
went off with another man. And when your husband came after you, you killed him. Is that true? Is that true? That isn't what you told Hoss. Is it? No. Mr. Cartwright. My husband wasn't fit to live. I had tried to leave him many times. But he'd always stop me. When my mother was dying, he kept me from going to her, forcibly. The night that he was killed, we'd had an ugly fight. There was another man. He'd offered to help me. To give me money to go to my mother if I would. I went to him. My husband followed me there and broke in. He called me a trap. He began slapping me around. The other man tried to help me. But my husband just beat him to the floor, senseless. Then he came after me again. And I saw a gun. It was lying in a case. I picked it up. I aimed it at him. And I told him to stop. But he kept coming closer. And then I killed him. If I hadn't killed him, he would have killed me. And that's the whole story. Do you believe me? I don't know. Would you tell Hoss what you just told me? How could I tell Hoss what I've been, what I've done? I love him so much. If you love him so much, how can you lie to him? Because I don't want to lose him. I can't lose him. Are you going to live a lie for the rest of your life? What about Demers? What about the warrant for your arrest? I don't care. I came here to bury myself but I found a life instead I didn't ask to meet Hoss but I did and I love him and he loves me and he's he's gonna find some way to to keep Demis from taking me back he won't let Demis take me back if that's your idea of love to ruin the person you love Because of it is, I sure feel sorry for you, Carol. I sure feel sorry for you. Hoss won't believe you! He loves me. He'll believe me. Yes, he'll believe you. Knowing Hoss, I know he'll believe you. He loves you. And you'll destroy him. Get out of here. For Hoss's sake. And your own. Tell him the truth. Get out of here.
Me, horse girl. What do you want? Well, uh, I brought you some more things. Uh, what? Uh, well, just a minute. Come in, horse. I told you I wouldn't be long. That's my sweet horsey. I knew you wouldn't be long. I did. Oops. I'm just having a little prenuptial celebration. You too, Hazy. You too. You're going to have a little prenuptial celebration. No, no, thank you, Caroline. I don't believe I care for it. Bad, Hazy. You said you were going back to the Ponderosa. Well, I, I was, but I had to pick up these things, and I ran across these flowers, and I just thought I'd bring them over to you. Oh, oh that's sweet. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, <laughs> you're my sweet hussy. <laughs> you love me better than anybody in the world, don't you, hussy? Yeah, Carol, I love you, but don't you think you've had enough to drink? No. Honey, did they send up the clean laundry yet? Who is he, Carol? Who is he? Guess you might as well tell him, honey. He's just who you think he is. Just who you think he is. Carol. Oh, Carol, Carol! Is that all you can say, Carol? Well, now you know. What do you want me to do? Cry? Would you like me to beg your forgiveness? <laughs> you. If you'd only stayed in there one more minute, we'd have had him hooked. You would have been married. And it would have cost you plenty to get out of it. Well, what are you standing there for? Carol. What are you doing? What am I doing? <coughs> I like that. It was you who fostered your attentions on me. You and your stuffy family. Well, that's a very rich family. Why shouldn't I have some of that money? Huh? Did you think I was doing it for you? You? To bloom for me? To hook more yokels than you could count. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'll let you have it. For a swing! Get out of here! You better get out, farm boy. takes care of my end of it. Now you're going to be nice and tame all the way back to New York, just like you promised, huh? Just like you promised, huh?
better get ready. That judge and jury have been waiting a long time for you. I'll get my coat. himself. Mourning a lost love is one of them. <laughs> 